I'm Johnny, and it's time to listen. If you're doing any sort of mixing or mastering, the art of listening is something that you should really start cultivating. It's also important if you're in the business or play of writing music. Now, just to lay out all the cards on the table, I am by no means an expert listener. One of the biggest challenges is understanding the difference between listening to a piece of music for its aesthetic experience, which is to say just enjoying the sound for what it is and letting it wash over you, and listening to a piece of music critically to understand, for instance, what makes that particular piece of music do the thing that it does. Hit the top 10, make you want to get up out of your seat and move, or make you want to cry. It's a lot like watching a film just to enjoy it and watching a film to analyze how it affects society, what messages it sends. So one of the key techniques that you can use is to start to build up your repertoire of terms for the repeated patterns that you hear in music. And this goes across the gamut from things like chord progressions, song structures, all the way into like phasing and flanging as an effect and what kind of reverb is being used and how much compression and blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of important to understand what all of these different things sound like on a micro and a macro scale, but also to understand how you could do the same kind of thing in your own music. It can do you well to separate your enjoyment of the music from the critical appreciation of the music. Let me give you a for instance. My friend Jason turned me on to this track by this band called Train, and the song is Calling All Angels. And I find it kind of half schmaltzy, half bro-y pablum. It's just, I don't find it that interesting. Sorry. From a purely production-centered mixing standard, this track is jaw-dropping. There is a lot going on, and yet somehow the mixing engineer is able to keep everything on the soundstage gelling just right, and it also doesn't even sound over-compressed, considering we're all a bunch of refugees from the loudness war. Now, when you're doing this kind of critical listening, it's tempting to bring the track into your DAW and have a look at all the different meters and look at the spectrum and, oh my God, look at the oscilloscope and, oh, here's a phase meter. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. In fact, I encourage you to do that. But another thing that you can do is just shut your goddamn eyes and listen to the song. And you will be surprised at just how much shutting your eyes can change the way you hear a particular piece of music. And yeah, listening space and listening position is super important. If you're going to give a track a serious critical listen, then certainly like play it on your big sexy studio monitors in your treated room, but also try it out on headphones and also try it out on your laptop speakers because all the real good mixing engineers, they mix a song with the assumption that it's not just going to be played on somebody's headphones. It's also going to be played in some of the worst places possible. All right. If you have any tools or any techniques about how to listen to music critically, I would love to hear them. Boy, howdy, would I ever. So make sure you post your comments and suggestions down there in the doobly-doo. And until next time, critical listening is fun.